What up, what's good? It's your man James Maverick, CEO of Maverick Films, director extraordinaire. And I'm giving a shout out to Dupe Magazines. We from this witches and wizards. Yeah, travel. Away from this witches and wizards. Come with the bigger boys. Don't play at the small way. Now that you're not thinking, play more fake control way. Long-time friend, director, extraordinaire, <laughs> James Maverick. <laughs> What's up? Good to have you, been. Been a while. So, um, who exactly is James Maverick? <laughs> how, how would you define James Maverick? Man, how would I define James Maverick? James yeah. Maverick is a madman. As a, <laughs> in a good way. Um, no, really. The guy is like, I, I, uh, whenever people ask me this question, I'll just say he's two people. Mm. There's James Maverick and there's a Dausa Osage, which is me. James Maverick is the alter ego. That's the that's the business-minded guy, the talent, basically. And um, the Dausa Osage is the quiet one. He's the reserved guy. He's the one that will sit back and think things through. James Maverick is the one that does that. So he's basically a go-getter, a talented go-getter. So, wow. That's, that's complex, bro. That's <laughs> really complex. Anyways, obviously you're a film director and stuff, yeah. so um, has film directing always been like uh, an aspiration? Oh yeah. For you? Oh, definitely. Um, ever since I was like, what, 12? You know what I mean? Like, you probably already know my name is a pastor. Yeah. And um, one thing about Nigerian churches is, you know, they always try to, um, what's the word? Take their services. Mm. Um, and whenever that happens, I'm always, you know, watching it. And um, I just picked up that interest from there, you know. It, it basically uh, caught my eye and wanted to be behind the camera, looking at the reactions of, you know, the, the faces of people. You know, how they basically take the sermon, you see some people crying, you see some people laughing, you see some people dancing, and stuff like that. Then, along the way, um, I uh, got an opportunity to work on a movie in Nigeria, a very new budget movie that didn't sell nada. It's called ne uh, Better Late Than Never or something like that. <laughs> um, that's where I got really exposed, you know, to you know the whole film industry, you know, the whole lights, camera, you know, film crew, directing, producing and all whatnot. And from there that's when I decided okay this is really really what I want to get into. This is what I want to do. Yeah. And uh, with the support of my cop you know, here I am now. I died. <laughs> so, um, what actually influenced you into being like a filmmaker? Like, from the home front, we have people like Amaka Igwe, um, Teko Benson. Um, um, I look at people. I look at works by Clarence Peters, um, AK One, um, Bobby Boulders, um, um, and some other people. Then international wise, I look at works by Steven Spielberg. As a matter of fact, some some people have started calling me Young Spielberg. I don't know why. My work isn't as good as that guy's work. Uh, Steven Spielberg, um, Colin Tiley, that's a new guy to watch out for. Um, Mr. Boom, um, um, Hype Williams, um, Jerry Bruckheimer. Um, you know, different people. And even and even the list goes on. Even even I even take inspiration from from people that are not known. Like for example, you go on YouTube and you'll be seeing all these short films. You know, um, stuff like that catch my stuff, stuff like that you know catches my attention and I take inspiration from that. Okay. So um, how would you describe your style of filmmaking? I never stick to one style. It's 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 I tend to play with my work. That's okay. Other um I mean other directors they tend to stick to one particular style of uh, of of uh, image, but me, <laughs> I tend to just play around with it. You know if I look at the video, like for example, if it's a music video now, I tend to go by what I hear. Okay, you know I'm influenced by what I hear. What's your um, creative process in making your music videos? Like? Uh, just like I said before, um, when I when I get you know contacted by an artist saying that okay they want to shoot a music video, I first ask okay where is the song? Let me listen to the song. Because when you listen to a song, you get some sort of feeling. 
from that song. It's from that feeling that you then start to think about how the video should look like, how the artist should be. Mm. Then from there, that's where the idea comes in. Okay? When the idea comes in, that's where you now start to build on that idea. Mm. From that, pro from that beginnings, from that, um, from that start to the production stage, that's pretty much how it goes. So for example, that Fowl's video the I can transform you know, that everyone knows about like what was going on through your mind, like what was going on up there. How did you do that whole um, the video? How did you bring it about the whole walking down the stairs? To the end. See, I'm doing it better than they thought I would be able to. I'm capable. When he call my trap, what's the kill with you? Whatever you think I'm not. Trust me, I'm probably that. Me, I do my thing. This guy, you're just a copycat. How's this, how's this video, man? Huh? I have a confession to make. How's this video? It was. Confession. Confession. <laughs> it was done under two hours. No way. I you Are you guy. It was done under two hours. As if there was no script. There was no, no, no uh, storyboard for it. Files came up to me and it was like, okay, I wanted to shoot a video. And I was like, okay, um, do you want now? I want to shoot a video. I mean, the song is fun. And I don't want a situation where I'm going to ruin the fun by basically, okay, thinking of storyline, storyboard. We just said, like, okay, you know what, let's get a studio, get some props, and just go with the flow. And it just turned out the way it turned out. We started off serious at first, and then there was that part where he was uh, he brought the chocolate bar, the chocolate uh, bar, and that, that part. <laughs> me, I was like, whoa. That's a little <laughs> we, we, we definitely had to put the chocolate in, man. Because when the guy said, look at uh, 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 something chocolate, that's my flavor. <laughs> See, I could transform you like a transformer. Make you my current chick, can make my current chick my former. No, she don't know, but don't worry, I'll inform her. And I tell her that I'm not involved with the former. <laughs> the former, I put you before her. And if you hurt you, I rescue you from the trauma. It's normal, that's my nature. Look at you, chocolate, that's my flavor. And that's what I came for. It's fantastic, it was a very good day. Shout out to Files, man. Nice one for the opportunity. Okay, so you've done so many videos, obviously, like a couple of videos so far. Um, which one of the videos holds like the sort of like fondest memory so far? Pretty much it, all of them, because every every um, client, every artist, every music video comes with a different experience. They all come with different experiences, and those experiences are ones that I don't think I don't think I can take for granted. So each and every one of them. There's no, there's no favorite as a, yet, yet. Because I know there's, I know, I know. Sometime in the future, something will come that will basically blow my mind. But for now, everything that I've worked on, they are on the same level. Okay. Um, obviously, like the filmmaking uh, movement that you've been doing is, I won't exactly say it's new in Nigeria, but yeah. as a young man, it's, uh, it's not. You don't find out on a daily basis. You know what I mean, like. It's, it's kind of rare for a young person, obviously, to to be doing what you're doing. So what struggles so far have you encountered? Obviously, you've gone through a lot. So what struggles in particular have you found? You know, sort of like challenges and stuff. Hmm. Man, where do I begin? First, we have to think about capturing the audience. And that was the case. I mean, let's face it, I'm not the, I'm not the first person to start this one. Other filmmakers. So that's a situation whereby when I first started, um, it was it was me basically coming out of my comfort zone. You know, so for me to actually come out of my comfort zone, that was a struggle first. Because I, I had some doubt, serious self doubt. But after I overcame that one, um, another struggle that came along was clients. You have bad clients. Everybody has bad. Everybody always has bad clients. But there are just some that decide, okay, they would like to run you down. And me, I come from a family that believe that words they have serious impact. Um, all that struggles are, uh, you know, obviously finances. And when you decide, okay, you want to become independent, 
<laughs> that just means you're not asking for Mumsia Cups itself anymore. Uh, so, um, I think that's pretty much what, I've, um, what I have uh, faced so far. So, um, in sort of like a nutshell, have you brought out that name, like in branding your name and yourself, have you put it out to the public? Obviously, we know you have a good support team out there, but you know, have you done it? Like that? No, I've really done that. I just think good friends. I just think about good friends as well. Like, for example, now my producer now. Get the camera on this guy. This guy needs, this guy needs. <laughs> <laughs> You know. Um, I mean, good friends. That's all I'll say. Good friends, man. Really good. When you have good people in your life, it takes you far. It takes you far. Um, um, I mean, I started out as a one-man band, man. So, I mean, when the whole my first started, it was just me, man. That's me basically doing the whole groundwork and everything. But immediately I decided, okay, let me now bring in people that I trust, people that you know, know me for who I am. Things took a different level. You know, so, so it's very good to have good people in your life that support you, that know exactly you know, what your goals are, that are basically on the same wavelength as you are. So yeah, that's pretty much how James Maverick came out. You know? True good friends. So, so, so far, how would you describe your experience in this industry? Beautiful. Yeah? That's, that's just one word. <laughs> yeah? Beautiful. That's, every, time, every time we're always saying beautiful, 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 because it is. You know, every, every, even if it's a bad experience, you know, even if we have a bad experience like some people, you know, uh, the reason why I hear some people in there. <laughs> some liminals now. Some liminals. Yeah, yeah. You know, you see why I'm smiling? <laughs> because I've basically, I've basically gone past mm, all that thing. That's you, know, you so out there. In, as in, the best is watching now. Yeah, the best we are watching now. <laughs> you see, we're going to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it real. The best is watching as so you already know who the person is. You know so, hi. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, it's been beautiful. Mm. Every experience has been beautiful. The whole experience has been beautiful. The ups, the downs, everything's been beautiful. So that's a situation whereby the downs give me more reason to even skyrocket. Haters want me clap. Haters, haters want me clap. Haters want me clap. Haters, want me clap. Haters, haters want me clap. Haters want me clap. Haters, haters want me clap. It ain't easy. How would you describe the, the state of the film industry in the UK and now in Nigeria and Hollywood, obviously? Oh man. Okay, let me start from let me start from the UK since we're in the UK. Um, it's brilliant. It's actually brilliant. Um, I mean, before it wasn't as it wasn't as strong as it is now, mm. but now you see more British actors being into film. You see more British directors being you know, being recognized. Like for example, that as well. The guy that did 28 Days Later. The guy came from nothing, and all of a sudden, because of his talent, you know, it gave more light to UK to the UK film industry. Home wise, <laughs> man, I am very proud. Of Nollywood, I am very big up as a man. Everybody that is in Nollywood, big up to all the directors, all the actors, all the producers, all the editors, all the marketers, all the distributors. Everybody that works in Nollywood, I am very proud of Nollywood. If you cut me open at one point in my body system, you will see Nollywood inside because I rep it to the fullest. <laughs> you know the quality might not be okay up there, but damn. The material is definitely up there. Before you know it, a Nigerian film will win best international film at the Oscars. Before you know it, as in it's very, it's, it's, it's not, it's not far off. It's not far off. It's not far off. I saw a film not too long ago called EJ. Well, I didn't actually see the film. Actually, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see me say I saw film. I don't see the film. I never see the film yet. So, uh, I saw the trailer and I was super impressed with the quality of this guy. So it's not. It's, <laughs> Uh, the sky is not the limit, too. The sky ain't the limit. It's heaven that is the limit now. You know, I'm very impressed with what, with, with how far Hollywood has come. I'm the realest. I'm the coolest. I'm the